But uh, if I can say that first, uh, if we try to change the people, the success of smart work depends too much on individuals, which is basically out of control. <music> This is your time. Welcome and everybody else enjoy. Thank you so much. I I'm sorry that I couldn't speak uh, uh, your language well, but uh, I prepared a little bit. Uh, hello, Jusaman, Shun, Dikanen, Sulanen. I'm not sure if it's correct, but next time Peter can teach me. This is me, believe or not. Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, my name is Agnes Lecon, and my Korean name is Che Duo. Che Duo. I know it's hard to pronounce. I'm very honored to be invited to this meaningful uh, event today. And I like to express my appreciation before I start. Thank you so much. Uh, let me introduce myself first, in short. Uh, I have been working as a smart work director since 2013. And I'm helping uh, Korean companies to implement the new way of working by uh, changing their office environments and rebuilding a team structures and the decision making process, or sometimes introducing hybrid work. Uh, of course, I'm not working alone. I created I create a professional team for each project under the registered private company. And uh, the name of my company is Beta Lab. Beta Lab, and in Korea, Beta Lab, same. Uh, yeah, it came from the concept of a beta codex, uh, which I first heard of in the news flaggings, the Korean copy of the book. Da -da! Yes, the left one is the Korean copy, and the right one, I think it was the original book, uh, the 12 New Principles of Management. I mean, even though I cannot read it, but uh, today I'm here to share my experiences and insights uh, while I, was, uh, I worked as a smart work director and especially how hierarchical culture retards smart work in South Korea and what we can do. Okay, uh, I guess many of you noticed since I started this intro talk that I have mentioned smart work, smart work many times. Well, uh, smart work is another name of the new way of working in South Korea. The term smart work was first introduced by the Korean government in 2010, 2010 or 2011. The President Lee's government started to call the new way of working a smart work in the sense that the change makes people's life and work smarter. Hmm. Uh, speaking of which, uh, why don't we start with a brief history of smart work in Korea? Well, um, in 2010, as I told you earlier, the Korean government announced that they would start the so-called smart work approach to build to public offices and uh, private businesses. During this time, smart work is mostly focused on technology and devices. Actually, some large companies used to distribute uh, tablets or new smartphones to their employees. And consequently, uh, people had an implicit bias against the smart work, which is expensive and difficult, like uh, devices. But a few years later, the focus moved to the office since uh, global companies' office design were introduced in Korea. At this time, office became a brighter and the more comfortable atmosphere with the desk cubicles lowered or removed. And we call it smart office, very branding, huh? And it was the mid 2010 when the mindset was focused by smart work followers. 
And we realized that the key success, key to success is people's perspectives toward work and human beings, not devices or spaces only. And between seven, 2017 and 2019, many co-working spaces, space brands like WeWork or Korean brand Fast Five started to open their branches in Seoul. Uh, some small and middle-sized companies moved to the WeWork for the employee satisfaction and talented attraction because the atmosphere was really great. And in, tw in 2020, and as you already know, the COVID-19 was the first reported and it totally changed Koreans' way of working. Also, um, the Korean workers quickly got used to working from home, we call it remote work. And also the level of online communication and collaboration has been rapidly developed, which is good. So now many companies consider hybrid work as uh, the weed corona working model. So like after experiencing many phases of smart work for decades, way more leaders in the companies now understand what smart work really means. Okay, here we go. Uh, for your information, smart work implies three meaningful meanings, effective, efficient, and systemic. So being effective means it makes practical and meaningful results. And being efficient means it enhances uh, productivity with the least waste of the time and effort. And the being systemic means it makes a significant improvement on overall behaviors within the organization. Actually, the last systemic is a very important keyword for smart work in Korea because smart work works on the system, not the people. Why, why not the people? I guess you already know. But uh, if I can say that first, uh, if we try to change the people, the success of smart work depends too much on individuals, which is basically out of control. And we believe that having the right person is an issue of a recruiting, not smart work. And another reason is that we don't think people are problems, but solutions. So we do our best to create the right environments where people can think and behavior in the desirable ways. Uh, well, based on the right and clear concept of a smart work like this, many Korean companies have tried to change their old fashioned and sometimes dysfunctional ways of working. However, and not all companies made a success in switching to smart work. But honestly, and actually more companies ended in failure. Uh, as we have been involved in several domestic smart work projects since 2013, we have found some typical failure factors in transforming traditional work in, uh, into the new ones. So I will introduce one by one. Why smart work fails in South Korea? The first factor is infrastructure. This is about whether they have sufficient infrastructures or necessary, fail necessary facilities for working in the new ways. So let me give you a simple example. Uh, when Korean company started remote working before the pandemic, and its CEO distributed like high-speed laptops and the extra monitors for all work from home employees. And plus, most C-level executives had a mindset workshop before their first day of remote work. So they prepared a lot. But despite all their best efforts, uh, their remote work didn't work. Why? The reason was simple because employees couldn't work from home because of the limited access to the documents out of the company. Sometimes they couldn't even access the uh, company's intranet. So in the end, most employees went back to the office with a little trust on remote work. Uh, second factor is education. This is about uh, whether the employees understand the necessity and the direction of the change. 
The one interesting point is that Korean employees are exposed to various kinds of training and workshops provided by the companies. Uh, what they should change and what collaboration tools to use and what features the tools have, blah, blah. But the most important education is often missed. Why they need to change they, their way of working. And without knowing this most important question, the employees follow the given guide rules at first, but they don't really change their way of working. That's what we have solved. And in Korea, it's very common that employees uh, passively use the collaboration tools because their boss uh, forced them to use it, but not share, they don't share the meaningful information through the collaboration tools. And the last one, but not the least factor is that hierarchical organizational culture. Uh, most large companies in Korea manage it, change it through top-down approaches. The, the leaders create the implementation plans or the communication plans for the employees. I mean, I, of course, I understand the intention. Their intention is to make the change more consistent and efficient and also to speed changes as much as possible. Well, this, this approach once made sense when the leaders had all the key information and the markets were more predictable and the organizations were less complex. But a top-down approach like this in smart work is basically disconnected with a current situation today. Because the reporting lines in the company are more complex now and matrixed with uh, many horizontal in the interdependencies. And the employees know their jobs and markets and the competitors way better than 20 years ago. Well, uh, the organization's, uh, organization's hierarchical culture could be reflected on the smart office too. I mean, this is not the exact picture that I actually prepared because I'm not supposed to use on public, but uh, this is another picture. Uh, when I was in the uh, Office Innovation Project of a Korean government agency, we turned the most dedicated desks in the traditional layout into shared desks and removed the cubicles blocking the communication between the different teams and or ranks. In the beginning, everything looked totally fine. People to take the different seats every day, regardless their ranks. Uh, so the desk hierarchy seems totally eliminated. But when we visited the office three months later for interim checkup, we found the uh, hierarchy had been back. So the directors and the managers at high position were using the same desks along the uh, windows. You mean the uh, window side, the best uh, best spot of the office. And the big plants or affordable furniture were used as a wall separating the zone for leaders and the zone for others. I was actually very impressed by their creativity in using the given items to reveal their hierarchy. <laughs> well, I know organizational hierarchy is everywhere to greater or lesser degrees. However, the hierarchical culture in Korea organization is too dominant to change it, the old way of working. So, yeah. Then what makes Korean organizations more hierarchical compared to the ones in European countries? Uh, the first two reason is this. Many HL experts say it has been affected by the mandatory army service in Korea. Uh, I don't know if you already know this or not, but uh, most Korean men should go to the army, serve the army uh, one year and a half at least. They say uh, like even years after being discharged from the army, the men who served in the military often feels they are superior to men who were exempt from the service. Well, actually, when you join a new company in Korea, that you have someone who teaches you a job for a couple of months. And this person is called a shooter or a gunner, gunner so which refers to the person who uh, shoot in the army. 
I think this shows how much the military culture have influenced the business world in Korea. And the fact that the Korean language has honorific forms also plays a big role in hierarchical co corporate culture, I think. Like a Western language, Korean has a honorific language, and it is not only for the formal relationship only. The younger person is supposed to use honorific languages to the older, unless they are really, really close, uh, like brothers or sisters. So in order to decide whether you talk in honorific forms or not, it's completely normal in Korea to ask the age of someone you've just met, um, even though it is perceived as a very impolite in other culture. I found this YouTube channel uh, where the two kids meet each other for the first time. And can you guess what the first question of them? How old are you all the time? Because you shouldn't know what kind of language you should use. Uh, the Korean society also empathize on rank, and I think it is also one of the reasons. Uh, in Western culture, co-workers call each other by name, but the Korean call their co-workers by rank or title, like assistant manager, a manager, director, executive manager, and so on. So uh, actually, most Korean people call me not Agnes or like Le Grand, they call me, hey, director. <laughs> so some major Korean companies have attempted to change such a rank-based culture since 2000. So uh, they have made its employees address each other with a Korean honorific title, Nim. It's a special uh, title, Nim, like uh, Agnes Nim or Suji Nim or Peter Nim. And the many IT-related companies like uh, the Kakao, like a Korean a Google kind of, and they uh, made their employees go by their English names. However, all these efforts has not led to any visible changes in Korean corporate culture. And some companies, including like a Korean telecom or a co uh, Postco, yeah, Postco, have abandoned this practice because it is not well uh, practiced. Then why did many of them fail to end the hierarchical culture in organization? I think one of the possible answer is that they work on the surface of the problem instead of the fundamental roots of a hierarchical culture. In other words, uh, many companies focus on removing the uh, outward hierarchical behavior of the employees for a short time instead of changing their fundamental mindset or perspectives toward the relationship with the coworkers. Actually, in order to change the people's mindset rather than changing uh, everything all of a sudden, we should understand their hierarchical culture and admit it, uh, it has been there for decades. And we should consider how employees would feel when the old hierarchy is suddenly disappeared. And here is the 16-year uh, experienced workers said in his private interviews with us. I will read a little bit. Since I started working in this company 16 years ago, we have received the raises and the promotions on the same schedule according to age. Desks are arranged according to the position. I mean, high position in a nice place. So uh, when the company forced us to use English names along with a more horizontal culture, instead of the rank or title, I feel they are removing my backbone of an organization. As a typical workers who often spend 10 hours a day in the company for the most of my life, I feel that my life identity is taken as well. This sounds pretty serious, right? And then changing the, uh, the innovation, it's not only about the office or the company, it's about their identity too. So this is why uh, radical changes without considering exist existing uh, hierarchical hierarchical culture often lead to the failure. So whether they like it or not, the Korean employees have 
internalize the hierarchy throughout their life experiences. So uh, it is natural for them to feel insecure and anxious in front of uh, rapid changes. Then how to make them feel secure and or less anxious about the changes? Uh, I think one of the best way, as we have observed, is a frequent opportunities for open conversations with different levels in the organizations. So hierarchy is based on the misconception that one side is superior to another. And this illusion can be gradually shattered as people get to know each other better. So we often use the open space technology for this and we invite employees to the workshop to talk about what problem or what risk is they expect uh, when it comes to smart work or what they are afraid of or what kinds of the support they need to lessen their own concerns. And another effective way to impoverish the hierarchy is to build a system for information sharing. Uh, in a hierarchical organization, critical information and its context are really centralized only to the top managers. And the accidents and mistakes at the working level are not reported on time. And this not only slows down the whole organization, but also causes a poor decision making. So uh, creating a system to share as much as information as possible with other employees can solve this problem, actually simply. Well, it is not easy, of course, at first to convince the employees with uh, its benefits, I mean, to share the information, but it helps the workers of the most levels to quickly understand the situation and respond to it. And the best part of it is that uh, its hierarchy becomes more helpless than before. Well, aside from those, there are a few more ways to take a delicate approach for hierarchical culture. And uh, if the company the CEO can be a role model for horizontal relationship in the, in the company, is uh, then, it can work. Uh, in one of the one of the smart work projects I joined it, the CEO tried to listen to the working level employees and intentionally admitted that uh, some of his past decisions were uh, not smart. And after that, what happened is that we noticed that more leaders spent time listening to their staff and that they are willing to admit their mistakes or fault to, to their team members than before. And this is, I think, wise way of taking advantage of the hierarchical cooperation culture uh, conversely. And involving the millennial leaders in the core of the smart work project group it also works pretty well. Normally, millennials are the first generation that grew up in the Internet age. So they are familiar with sharing thought and opinion aligned with various kinds of people, just like us. They place a high value on open uh, workspace with less emphasis on the company hierarchy. And they strive to create inclusive workplaces where everyone has an opportunity to share their voices, regardless of their position or title, or age, or sometimes background. So uh, if the company empowered these millennial leaders to change the way of working, they will naturally lead the corporate culture from authoritarian hierarchy into uh, the inclusive diversity we believe. Okay, the conclusion. Hierarchical culture in Korea organizations has been considered as a frustrating obstacles to smart work. Well, I'm not telling you a lie. Uh, hierarchy is annoying and frustrating most of the time to me. And also it is one of the major reasons why so many Western consulting firms have failed in Korea. But uh, hierarchy can work very positively in making all employees move fast forward desirable direction. 
only if the top leaders show their strong trust and determination on smart work. So uh, based on my special experiences in Korea companies, I can say this with confidence. With a constant attempt to have a conversation based on understanding of a hierarchical culture, not rejection, the new way of working, so-called smart work is more than possible. Thank you. Weitere spannende Videos rund um Beta findet ihr hier und wir freuen uns, wenn ihr ein Abo dalasst.